Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's Follow Him Favorites. We're doing a little something different this year. Maybe you've seen it by now, where we pick a question that we've received from uh, youth or our own, even our own students uh, and kind of bringing that up as part of this week's lesson. So, John, uh, the question that uh, I've received from students is this idea in, uh, and it comes up in different places, uh, but in Moses 7, uh, the Lord says there was no poor among them. It, it comes up in 4th Nephi, comes up a little bit in, in the book of Acts, this idea of there's no poor among them. And I've had students say before, um, am I supposed to be giving everything I have away? If I don't do that, am I, am I a bad person if I don't, you know, if I, if I see a homeless person on the street and I don't go over and, and give them money or, or get them and take them to, to dinner. And, and, you know, uh, that's what Jesus would do. Like, where, where's the line between me living my life and moving forward and, and trying to reach this ideal? So do you have any thoughts on that? What would you say? Wow, that's a great one. And it, it comes up, I teach down at the BYU Salt Lake Center. And we're, we're like on 4th West, 3rd West. We see it. Right downtown right Salt Lake. We yeah. are. Yeah, some of that. And I think sometimes um, I like to look at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. Take no thought for the morrow, what you shall eat, what you shall wear, what you shall put on. Right. Like, literally, we're supposed to go to the park and play hacky sack and expect, <laughs> you know, who's going to, we don't have to, we should just have others feed us. And then, um, and then the Book of Mormon makes it clear he was speaking to the 12. I'm going to take care of you. But we all we have to do that. We have to provide for our families. We look at the proclamation to the world on the family. I'm I, I'm supposed to be a provider, um, but then I can also have a donation and pay my tithing and fast offerings, and and that is one of the fun you know challenges of life. What is the right balance here for me to take care of my family, my home, provide for my children, and also do what every Christian wants to do, and that is help. Uh, provide for the poor and fast offerings. And I'm, I'm really grateful for fast offerings because I know that um, those are going to be distributed by people who are trying their best to be inspired and how the church helps with the natural disasters and stuff. And they're, it's not just throw money at it. It's much more careful than that. And um, so that's, that's a great question that's kind of hard to do in a follow him favorite. But I yeah. think it's, it's good that you're thinking about it. It's a good challenge to try to have what's the right balance to prayerfully figure that out. What do you, what do you right. answer, Hank? Right. Well, I would say, you know, obviously the Lord wants you to get an education. He wants you yeah. to, to get a career. He wants you to move forward. So this is one of our many Christian imperatives that we're, we're, working, mm -hmm. we're working towards. Uh, I would say that the Lord often says it is not requisite that a man or woman should run faster than they have strength. He's, he doesn't expect us to all be Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa is exceptional. Um, but that doesn't give us the idea to be like, well, then I don't have to worry about it at all. No, I, I don't think that's true. But I would start. I wouldn't start in my community, to be honest. I mean, if I can do some things there, obviously you, you want to do some good there. But let's get Zion inside of you first. And then let's get Zion in your close relationships, right? Uh, and then let's let's build from there instead of do you remember that old Ezra Taft Benson quote? Um, the Lord doesn't work from the outside in. Do you remember that one? Yeah. He works from the inside out. The inside but out. The world would take people out of the slums. But Christ takes the slums out of the people and they the take people. themselves out of the slums. It's a yeah. it's a, that's a great way to put it, Hank, is you start here, cleanse the inner vessel. Or that might even be the title of the talk. Right? Right. You start here. And uh, it's, it's like a circle of influence, a circle of concern type of a thing. Yeah. It's a good discussion to have and a great question. I'm not sure it's one we can answer quickly, but I'm just glad somebody's asking the question. I'll tell you, John, when I served as a financial clerk for a ward, uh, that's not a calling I get very often. It only has happened once in my life. I was so amazed. And this was back when all the donations came through that office, right? Now you can make your donations online. But yeah, I was right. so amazed at the giving people, uh, mm -hmm. the giving people gave. I don't know if that's, a, <laughs> it's a, I sound like I'm in the scriptures, the giving of a giving. You have giving a given. <laughs> given a giving. Of given a giving. But there are people giving so much in yeah. not just tithing, but in fast offerings. In offerings, they were, and you never would have guessed. I never would have even known that this person is really pushing themselves in offerings. And I thought that was such a, it's always stayed with me for, you know, yeah. years later. 
to see people do that. So, um, but uh, again, you don't want to get to the point where you're hurting your, your, your family, your chances at an education opportunity. Um, uh, but, but the Lord does require a lot of us. Don't, don't, uh, we don't want to say he's not. You, you mentioned the verse, it's not requisite that a man should run faster than he has strength. And I think right after that, it says, but see, these things are done in wisdom and in order. It, yeah. It's something you think about, that you grapple with, um, and you try to make the best judgment you can with some inspiration. But you still have roles that you have to fulfill. And we do, Hank, as, as fathers and husbands and members yeah. of our ward. Um, so we have to make a living, but we also want to say, how, how can I, in my circles, bless the poor and needy that are around us? It's a great, great question. Yeah. And you've, you've told me before this too, is that it's not always about money. People can have great wealth and still be needy, right? Yeah. Need of a in friend, fact, need of a... Oh, yes. The, they, they used to say the threefold mission of the church was proclaim the gospel, perfect the saints, redeem the dead. President Monson added care for the poor and needy. And now it's been restated. Live, care, invite, unite. Live the gospel of Jesus Christ. Care for those in need. Hmm. That's the whole sentence. So it might not be that they're poor, but they might have a need, an emotional need, a friendship need, a companionship need. Care for those in need. Live the gospel. Care for those in need. Live, care, invite all to come to Christ and unite families for eternity. So I like, but thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to bring up one last story, if that's okay. John Huntsman Sr.'s wife told a story. Now, John, if you don't know who that is, John Huntsman Sr., uh, he's a member of the church who uh, didn't start out very wealthy, but he finished quite <laughs> quite wealthy. Uh, we're not talking hundreds of millions. We're even more. Uh, he just, his businesses thrived. Well, um, his wife said, long before we had any of that wealth, um, we each, we had our little, you know, family budget and we each got $50 of our own spending money. And we never asked, have you ever heard this story, John? He said, she never mm. asked, they never asked each other, you know, what are you doing with your spending money? Cause it was yours. It was your little budget item, $50 of spending money. And she said, I never asked him what he did with it. He never seemed to get anything, but I never asked him. She said, I bought myself things. Uh, and she said, um, uh, after a couple of years of this, a woman stood up in fast and testimony meeting and said, uh, said, whoever, I don't know who it is, but whoever has been giving me $50 a month for the last few years, I love you. I mm. thank you. And John Huntsman Sr.'s wife said she glanced over at him. Like, and he just looked straight ahead. She said, but I knew it was him. <laughs> and he's just, she said, he's always been that way, that uh, he's a giver. And, and I think that, I think that we can give ourselves, let's give ourselves into, into prosperity like that. And maybe there's something to that. Anyway, John, yeah. we probably just confuse people more, but... <laughs> Hopefully we, yeah. hopefully we help a little bit with that. Mate, yeah. Go back and read. Yeah. Go back and read King Benjamin's speech. You know, he even says, if you don't have anything, say, I would have, I, I would give if I had, you know? Yeah. And he's, he's kind of talking about where's your heart. And that's kind of job one. Where's your heart? I would give if I had, uh, he says. Uh, so yeah, go read King Benjamin's speech again. And it gets a little complicated, too, because he says, are we not all beggars? And you should give to the beggar. But if you're downtown, there's a little sign that says, don't Please give don't. to the panhandlers. No. Give to the welfare agencies that really know how to help people, not just uh, prolong their problems, but to really help them. And, and that's a, yeah, it's a good discussion. <laughs> it is. It's a good discussion. And sure, there's varied opinions. And hopefully we, um, hopefully we added a little bit to that. And so uh, to new you, thoughts. Yeah. And you, you, John, when you said, hey, all things should be done in wisdom and order, I like giving to the church's organizations because I know that that money is going to reach the people that, that I want, that I'm hoping it will reach. Yeah. Right? Humanitarian aid, the research fast offering. And the work, right. They yeah. know how to really help, not just throw money at it. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and there's very, very low cost that's going to pay anybody along the way. 
Uh, I remember President Hinckley saying that this humanitarian aid, every every hundred cents of your dollar is going to get to those get to those people. So I I like that confidence in that wisdom and order. Well, thank you for joining us today. Hopefully, we added a little bit to uh, the your thoughts on this. Um, but you can you can write to us. You can send us a question that you have. Um, we'll hopefully work it into a week of follow him favorites. So join us next time. It might be your question.